Okay, we're going to move on to the second talk in the session, which will be given by Ira Moscovich, uh, entitled Manufacturing Confluence of Tools, Technology, and People. Ira is the Director of Advanced Manufacturing Programs at the Mass Tech Collaborative, and there he oversees implementation of Massachusetts Manufacturing Innovation Initiative, a development program providing nearly $100 million in matching funds to Massachusetts-based projects affiliated with manufacturing in the USA. Uh, in the USA. Uh, prior to that, he spent 27 years in analog devices in a progression of manufacturing and technology roles, and most recently is the Vice President and General Manager of U.S. Operations. So, Ira. Uh, good morning, and uh, thank you for the honor of addressing this group today. Um, I obviously have a, a fairly wide topic, manufacturing, so I'm not going to cover this exhaustively in 20 minutes. Uh, so what I thought I would do is actually take three different slices or kind of views into this very complex subject and then derive some attributes and some challenges as we may see as we go down the road in creating this integrated photonics advanced, manuf ma advanced manufacturing uh, capability. Um, I should probably also mention, just for safety, that everything I'm saying does not necessarily represent the views of my current employer, which is essentially the state of Massachusetts, or my previous employer. This is really my views as a manufacturer and a uh, technology developer. So these are the three uh, sort of cuts or slices I'm going to try to cover in 20 minutes. Uh, the first is a more traditional view of tools and technology and functions in a manufacturing line uh, as it may apply to the future of this integrated photonics advanced manufacturing system. The second is about the people uh, and the people aspect and labor aspects of such a very complex system. And then the third is um, taking that and looking outside of your factories and your manufacturing lines for the rest of the ecosystem and how uh, manufacturers in the future for integrated photonics really have to interact with the rest of the ecosystem. So I'll start with a fairly traditional view, uh, kind of a textbook view of manufacturing, kind of boxes, and we'll start with a box that says design. Um, design not typically part of a manufacturer's responsibility, but as all the speakers will have said and will probably say, obviously very importantly integrated into the entire concept of manufacturing. So you design a pick, and then uh, at some point you put it into a wafer fab, and you develop, and you process, and you create a pick in a wafer fab operation. I'm just noting MPW in there um, as, a, uh, as a, in this case, a multi-project or multi-product uh, wafers. But if you've run wafer fabs, if I, as I have in the past, you know that managing process and product development through your manufacturing operation is one of the most important and challenging tasks you could possibly have as a wafer fab manager. So we don't want to forget that as part of the process. Um, next, we uh, hopefully will be able to probe these picks at some point uh, in some kind of automated way, both to, re to feed information back to the wafer fab operation, as well as to determine which of the chips are working. And then we'll package it, just like we do in the semiconductor industry in some manner, and we will hopefully have very high-speed automated photonic testing to test these chips. And then we have the fairly mundane task, although critically important, because this is what your customer sees, of delivering the product actually to the customer on time. So kind of a fairly straightforward, simple view of manufacturing. Uh, possibly not so simple, because just like in the semiconductor industry, we expect to see, as Kim referred to, that there will be a drive for more and more integration, 2D and 3D integration. So this will probably supply a lot of complexity to a standard flow, where you'll have to have some kind of interposers. You'll be layering in various other chips, potentially, and lasers into your system, either hopefully actually fabricated simultaneously or perhaps heterogeneously integrated into some kind of interposer that probably, in this case, for intricated photonics, is more complex because you may have both electrical and photonic redistribution layers within some kind of interposer interconnecting both photonic and electrical devices. So the complexity will go up significantly, I would expect, in integrated photonics manufacturing. And then, hopefully, you will still have some kind of automated testing that you can still test in a discrete package and then go ahead and ship to your customers. 
But that may possibly get even more complex as it is getting in the semiconductor industry because very large customers really don't like the process of buying chips and making sure the chips go into somebody's board and then somebody's module and then they get it and have to deal with all of that cost and all of those layers. So in the semiconductor industry, there's actually more and more pressure on chip makers to become system and module suppliers. So we may find in the integrated photonics industry that there is pressure not just to be a wafer fab manufacturer, put it in a package and ship it, but actually ship the module. So you may find yourself having to deal with boxes and housing and fiber in and fiber out and all those kind of complexities, whether you do it yourself or whether you subcontract it. And that may wind up being the final product that actually makes this industry profitable. While you're doing all that, um, you have to be thinking about the whole reliability and quality aspect of what you're doing as an advanced manufacturer. This industry does not have the luxury of showing up 20 years ago when three or 400, even 1,000 ppm failure rates was kind of the norm, and you could go back and fix it later. We will be entering an industry where the expected defect level is zero, and they really mean zero which means the entire quality and reliability aspect of this thing has to be fully designed and integrated and thought through at every single stage from right where we're sitting today in this room in this conference right up through the next five years. And a complete suite of failure analysis capability that matches everything in that manufacturing line to get information very quickly back to the customers to ensure you really are zero defects. So on top of that, even if we have all the technology that has been developed through the efforts of your cells over the next few years, you have to continue to keep pushing the technology. Typically, if you're going to create brand new technology from an R&D stage, you have to be about 10 years ahead of where that technology is required. The challenge of that for a manufacturer in integrated photonics is your customers won't tell you what they need 10 years from now. In fact, the customers will tell you what they need next year. And they might tell you what they need two years from now, but they won't tell you what they need 10 years from now because they have no clue. So you can't be relying on them. As a manufacturer, you actually have to be looking out 10 years while you're running your manufacturing line and developing technology that you're going to put bets on, multiple bets that will be there 10 years from then. And it takes about five years probably if you have all the equipment in your hands even to develop this kind of technology and get it ready for manufacturing, which is partially why the Manufacturing USA Institutes are kind of five-year programs because they're starting from a much higher MRL, MRL level. So that's part of your job as a manufacturer also. And of course, in integrated photonics as well as in semiconductors, all of the uh, process design kits and all the modeling and all the simulations for designing are all fully uh, iterative and integrated into your process technology development. So all of your design tools and all of your PDKs and all of your process development is a constant iteration and collaboration all throughout. And it's a very complex process and that will certainly be part of the future of advanced manufacturing in, uh, in integrated photonics. So you have all that complexity you have to do as a manufacturer. Um, but that's not all. If you are really going to the point where I expect we will of having to acquire devices to be integrating into your interposers or perhaps even to your sub-assemblies, then you become a bill of materials manager. And you have to do this with great expertise and you have to understand the entire cost structure there. So you're not only managing your manufacturing line, you're likely managing other people's manufacturing line and other supply chains that are feeding into this advanced manufacturing look, both in terms of other OEMs supplying you chips and perhaps foundry services to make some of those chips or even do some subcontracted assembly. So you're managing essentially a foundry and bill of materials and supply chain yourself while you are actually manufacturing within your own lines. Um, and then, just for completeness, um, we have all the other functions that you have to do as advanced manufacturer because you have a wafer fab operation. The environmental health and safety regulations are intense and increasing. Uh, certifications are required. You need a suite of quality certifications and systems. Um, you also have to worry about cybersecurity, which is an entire another topic, but every manufacturer more and more has to spend a great deal of time thinking about their IT systems and cybersecurity. And then you also have to do enterprise risk management. These days, as an advanced manufacturer, you have to guarantee your customers you will never go down and they will never be shut down because of you, which is an entire field of enterprise risk management that was highly initiated by the tsunami in Japan a number of years ago in the semiconductor industry. And then beyond that, you've got to worry about finance, human resources, uh, your management of your campus in general, and your grounds, and so on. So that's a 
that's what it takes to be an advanced manufacturer in the integrated photonics industry in the future. So I think the message here, in terms of this being sort of a roadmap, is to think of it as, aside from all the technology, if we're going to be successful manufacturers, this is actually what you have to be looking towards and thinking about as we develop a manufacturing capability. And I think the two uh, messages there is it's, it is very complex, so you have to be planning ahead on this and all of these functions, otherwise it doesn't work. And secondly, it's extremely collaborative and iterative, and I think you'll hear that word collaboration constantly, but in terms of being a manufacturer, it has to be both forward as well as backward integrated, and the thought processes have to be thinking about that. If you're going to design a test system, you have to really understand what's testable in your fab. If you're going to design a fab system, you have to understand what capabilities are going to be in the test, and all the way through the system. In addition, from a design point of view, if we are going upscale to 2D, 3D, and beyond, the design requirements and complexities get very, very difficult just in terms of technology, let alone making sure that what you're designing from a cost perspective is actually profitable. So that's just one kind of a, a general view in terms of, the, in terms of the equipment and the functions and the technology. Switching to people, um, when I used to do quarterly meetings for my organization, I used to give them uh, the messages that uh, across the shifts at each of these meetings that all of our competitors, we really all have the same equipment and we all have the same way for fab operations and the same testers and the same packaging equipment. We all use the same subcons. The difference is in the people. And so the, having the people as a critical part of this whole story is really uh, uh, something that I think is something that has to be focused on very heavily. AIM Academy, of course, is well ahead on this in terms of thinking about the skills. Uh, but this is certainly essential. Some of the background factors in thinking about advanced manufacturing for integrated photonics are that we are having this uh, convergence of requirements from what's called Industry 4.0 or other, other kinds of terms, but it's really the advanced using of big data and analytics in the information-driven factory. Um, equipment that's increasingly more sophisticated, the drive for ever more capability in the equipment, which is in driving the incorporation of enormous amount of, of advanced sensors, which are gathering information and putting that out through the cloud uh, to the manufacturers, um, and enormous amount of computing and communication technology that supports that, real-time monitoring, um, and, uh, of course, connectivity all throughout the manufacturing system. So your labor force now has to deal with this enormous amount of information and data coming at them. The second dimension that people uh, skills have to be developed for is this whole issue that we will be entering an industry that has to start off at zero defects. We're talking about telecommunications, applications, aerospace, and other kinds of things like that. It really is zero defects and single-digit PPMs. Um, so one of the attributes of that that changes how people in your labor force think is that there's a complete loss of the aspect of cause and effect. So 20 years ago, if you have some kind of failure rate, you could gather your samples back from your customers, you could do Pareto's, you could figure out what was wrong, and then you could drive that uh, defect to zero. When you're at one PPM, which is what this industry is going to enter at as a requirement, there is no more cause and effect. You'll get a one PPM failure. There, you cannot go back through your manufacturing process and go fix that in that matter. You have to use other re pre prevention mechanisms that your labor force has to be very skilled in. Um, and so that requires a lot more analytics, a lot more subtle data analysis that your labor force has to be dealing with. Everybody from your floor operators right through your engineers. The second dimension is 100% on-time delivery. So, you know, 20 or 25 years ago in the semiconductor industry, you know, if you were shipping at 90%, that was really good. I mean, that was a competitive weapon. Uh, and maybe average 88%, 92% for your biggest customers, and, and you, were, you were a leader. Uh, it's 100% now. That completely changes how you design and operate that first picture I showed you in terms of advanced manufacturing. You have to think through all of that complexity and make sure that however you manage that, you never, ever miss a shipment to a customer. Um, and then finally, um, this industry, like every industry, will be pushed on price reduction and cost pressures. And so you have to have a method for constantly improving yield and constantly reducing cost to keep up with the requirements of the OEMs. So 100% on-time delivery, nearly 100% yield, zero defects, uh, lowering cost every year, some of it contracted, um, drives all kinds of different skill capabilities for the labor force. Um, so what I have here, and I'm not going to go through it in time, but this is a list of all the types of types of labor functions that would be required for that first chart I showed in terms of advanced manufacturing. Uh, you need process engineers, process developers, equipment engineers, and so on. And I'm just going to highlight a few that I think the integrated photonics industry has to really think about and make sure we're prepared for this 
when this technology comes to fruition and we're in truly in, in high volume advanced manufacturing. Um, the first is up on top there, process development engineers for photonics. I think we are turning people like this out out of universities, including uh, uh, places like here at MIT, um, but there's probably a need for more. The second category is probably a lot more challenging. You need process sustaining engineers that know about photonics. I'm not sure how many of these are, but they're probably very, very few, if any. But there has to be sort of this, uh, this uh, scaling up of BS engineers coming out to support these manufacturing operations who understand photonics. You also need a lot more of your data professionals or operation research people in this kind of view. Integrated photonics will have as much or more complexity than the semiconductor industry, and it can't function in a manufacturing line with zero defects and 100% on-time delivery and high yields and good cost without a whole bunch of operations research professionals and industrial engineers running around making sure that everything about that factory is absolutely world-class and sophisticated. Your equipment engineers are a different type of people as well with training. A lot of this equipment's gonna be different and the equipment engineers have to have special training as well. Um, going down to in terms of technicians, in terms of the entire factory, having the capabilities that are much more advanced than perhaps we had 20 years ago in terms of all of this data analytics. On the right hand side, a lot more IT and cybersecurity needed. That's in general for manufacturing, not just for photonics. Um, and then even your uh, your operators, so-called, that work in your clean rooms or your assembly and test factories have to have much higher skill levels because of all of this analytics and data that's coming at them. So um, just a summary in terms of labor, um, a growing need for non-traditional skills and structures in the workforce, um, a lot more training from the operators all the way through uh, your sustaining engineers on data collection and analytics. Essentially, all of these people become somewhat more statisticians and somewhat less chemical, mechanical, and electrical and photonics engineers. Um, again, the, the word collaboration, a lot more collaboration across all functions within the company and with your customers and suppliers, especially your tool vendors. Um, a need for a lot more focus on advanced cybersecurity and information systems. Um, and by the way, somebody has to manage this whole thing. So this, the requirement for people to have extremely high levels of management and leadership skills to manage this whole complexity is absolutely essential. So I'm gonna move on to my, uh, my third cut, which is the manufacturing uh, ecosystem. And I just uh, note uh, credit to Liz Reynolds at, uh, here at MIT in the Industrial Performance Center. Uh, who, uh, who uh, created um, the first version of this, which was an innovation ecosystem. And so she, uh, she uh, had laid the foundational work for describing innovation ecosystems, and I'm just expanding on that. So if I take everything I've just said, all of those views, and put it into this box, here's your factories, here's your manufacturing lines. But manufacturers these days cannot just simply stay within their factories and ship products to customers. You have a whole ecosystem out there if you're gonna be successful in the integrated photonics industry because of the complexity and the technology drivers. So you have to very stay very close to all the universities. You have to stay close to the Manufacturing USA Institutes and not just AIM Photonics because there's so much convergence and overlap between AIM and AFOA and NextFlext and the others. Um, you also have to be very, very knowledgeable and interactive with your labor market. You can't just sit there and look for people. You have to actually be proactive about pushing on skills that you need for the photonics industry. You have your local community. If you run away for fab, you certainly have to worry about that. You worry about the new venture community. Um, your end customers that are driving quality reliability, uh, green manufacturing, and in fact, ethical conduct uh, as well that these days you're getting certified to. Your state and fe federal government, both in terms of regulations, but as well in terms of assistance and grants potentially, industry groups, geopolitical competition, and so on. So um, I'm gonna skip this slide just in the interest of hitting staying on time. So conclusions. Um, first of all, in terms of these three slices of a very broad and very complex topic that I'm just touching on some key issues today. Uh, first of all, this is very complicated. Um, there's over a dozen functional areas. You've really got to manage, and you have to manage them perfectly because you're really shooting at 100% on-time delivery, zero defects, and cost reductions every single year. Um, so you have that whole aspect of feed forward and feedback and integrating and managing through that process. 
Um, in terms of labor, we need many more non-traditional skills and structures just to manage through this process, particularly with all the data collection. The complexities of the technology, the data coming out of Industry 4.0 drives that. Um, and a significant amount of management skills. If it was ever important, it's ever more important in this kind of technology that your managers and your leaders have to have extremely good management skills. Um, it is a rich opportunity for SMEs to new ventures to participate, but certainly when you think about that whole system that, they're, that they are supplying into, they are going to be highly challenged with respect to the requirements as that machine just moves along if they're part of that supply chain. Um, manufacturers will need to collaborate with that external ecosystem uh, if, uh, ever more uh, because of the driving of technology and the extreme re requirements and pressures on such an advanced manufacturing system. Uh, and uh, that was my last slide. Thank you. So Ira, that was beautiful uh, exposition on manufacturing, and it sounds like very much like what Charlie said. We created all of this ability to do data analytics and so forth with the previous industry, and now we're going to have to use it in order to be successful uh, in integrated photonics. Uh, was that part of your message? Yes. So. Um I think we will build, certainly upon the semiconductor industry and all of the capabilities and requirements that were there, I think what you're adding in is the aspect of the light management for photonics. So you take that whole complexity and infrastructure, but you have to pay attention to the fact that we're now adding um, the photonics aspects and the waveguide aspects, and then all the testability and packaging aspects as well. I think one of the, one of the things that the semiconductor industry certainly learns is that while all the, 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 all the sort of um, the, the, the uh, impressive technology aspects always seem to be in the wafer fab side, and we talk about that and think about that and you know, you know, endlessly think about the physics of that, uh, for semiconductor manufacturing these days, packaging and test is an enormous challenge. And you're going to be entering just, you know, running at full speed in integrated photonics with these kind of requirements on, on, from customers. And that packaging and testing is where all the, all the trip-ups are, are potentially going to happen. Having not adequate capability to really understand and simulate your packaging with respect to the interaction between the electrical signals and the light signals. And then can you really comprehensively test this when you're adding in that complexity of photonics and light? But you're going to have to, because you can't ship defects to your customers, and you're going to have to be 100% on time. So the answer is yes, but you really have to think about that whole photonic side, and that particularly, I think, testing and packaging. And that would certainly be an emerging knowledge that's going to, I think, be something to really pay a lot of attention to and not forget as we you know, really spend a lot of time on the, on the pick side. Uh, you're asking a lot of the uh, labor force. Uh, what's the size of the photonics industry? That's certainly a great question that someone else is going to answer. <laughs> Does anybody know the size of the photonics industry? So someone did this. Well, I, I'm projecting. So I'm projecting systems when we're in full swing. So I'm not sure what's projected to be. The next speaker is going to answer that question. Isn't that convenient? Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you, Eric.